October stuff, right? That's been strange because the only two things I've kind of failed on is ta- is doing a journal, um, which requires me to spend ten minutes um, at the end of the day. Usually, I think to kind of round up and kind of you know figure out what happened and kind of you know dump all that shit on paper. Um, it's only journaling what occurred, things that you liked and during the day, things you didn't like, things that you're thinking about, things that you're mulling over. And it's pretty joy down. Basically going back to how I was before when I was in school. I used to have a diary. Um it, it happened, you know when I had a diary in school, kinda of, this is a, this is a bit of a yeah, a bit of a bad time. It was I had a diary when I was younger, living back at home, because I was going through so much shit with my parents. Like we had loads of fights, there was loads of kind of turmoil in the household. I was growing up into a young man. My parents were adjusting to having these kids in the flipping, you know, Western society with different sort of ideas on how they should go about their life, and they weren't necessarily abiding by the rules that my parents were kind of adjusted, were kind of raised upon, very conservative very religious or very christian based um kind of way of growing up and you know i've I've had sympathy for my parents because it must have been such a tough time having three boys going through puberty uh, becoming their own men um you obviously trying to enforce your own rules and kind of um order in your own household it must be such a weird time to be a parent i don't envy that whatsoever but i remember for me personally that was a way that i kind of dealt with it by kind of keeping a diary i'd keep a diary about all the things i kind of went through and i remember before i moved out um yeah, before I moved out, um, I remember reading it and I just chucked it away because it was too painful. It kind of brought back so many bad memories. Um, it was really visceral. It was really real. It was really raw. It essentially was. Now I understand why books like Stillness is the Key and the other book I have up there, um, Daily Rituals, kind of speaks a lot about. There's a lot of um, successful people. Stillness is the Key, uh, Ryan Holiday's book, he mentions it a lot. That There's a lot of successful people out there who kind of swear by journaling. And I get it because it does. I get in the terms of a positive way, frame of thinking in a positive way of kind of going about it if you're a high-flying executive or a business owner or entrepreneur and you have the ability to kind of dump all these kind of loose thoughts in your head onto a bit of paper and then kind of close the book and then kind of start anew the next day it kind of allows your mind to be free to kind of do all the other tasks you want to do and also it's quite good for just cognitive ability just stress and just psychological um what do you call it psychological comfort psychological satisfaction whatever it may be you just feel better right the fact that you got it out of your head so I can see why that would be good. But imagine for a kid growing up and going through such a tough time and then when you're growing up in your household and you're just having fights with your parents and you just don't know what makes sense and everything gets all confusing and you don't really fit in with your friends outside of school and you're just confused. You're just, you're just confused. Imagine reading that back again to yourself now in this kind of, in your adult age where you've kind of grown up and you've known a couple of things. You're like, oh, it just feels so painful. You feel ashamed about some of the opinions you had about your parents, about what you thought about yourself. It's just disgusting, man. So I didn't really feel, I didn't really like it. So I chucked it away. But now looking back on it, I kind of regret throwing it away. I think those um, chapters in your life are really important. I think the idea of kind of, because I used to do that quite often, right? Especially with ex-girlfriends. I used to kind of always do this thing where I'd kind of, purposely delete or erase everyone from my brain that i didn't want to think about anymore it wasn't any it wasn't hate or anything i just whenever a relationship ended even friendships i do this mental thing where i just kind of pretend like you don't exist um so you know and again that's how i dealt with things maybe it's a man thing you know bill burr talks about that right the idea that you're just kind of as men we just bottle these things up right that's why probably men die of like strokes and you know heart attacks and stuff so early on so young in age and early 50s and shit people are dying of strokes and having heart attacks or aneurysms or whatever because we bottle in so much of our emotions we don't really let it out we don't talk um, freely with our friends about how we feel right even if even though how i said that how i enunciated how we feel right it makes it sound as if like it's some sort of like you know effeminate thing to be in touch with your feelings but the fact that we do that so often it probably leads to more problems and more issues and maybe the only really way to deal with it as a man especially if you're not at all down with sharing your feelings is to probably get a journal and write it down so i probably should do that going forward and i probably am going to do that it's another thing i got to add to my list that i haven't done for sober october um i got to do it one i've got to do a stand-up set I want to do a class of mixed martial arts because I'm scared of doing it. And I also want to do um, my learning of Spanish one hour a day because it's really important and I need to get that language down pat for the most part. But yeah, those are the two things I'm kind of a little bit, or three things I'm a little bit like, you know, um, on the rocks with. But, you know, slowly but surely, I think hopefully I'll get there.